Hello everyone, my name is Ellen Ruch and today I'm going to show you how you can work the light of this little guy, your pop-up flash. Um, I'm going to show you a technique with which you can turn its very harsh and direct light into a soft and even glow that bounces around the room. I've actually come up with this technique myself and I've never ever seen anybody else use it except obviously for uh, the people that I've told it to. But what I usually see on YouTube is one of two things. A people um, take their uh, pop-up flash and put some kind of translucent material in front of it, like plastic, in order to diffuse it. But what that only does for the flash is it weakens it, because the flash has to travel through one more object, so it's basically just an obstacle for your flash. Um, the other approach that I've seen on YouTube is that people put some kind of uh, softbox-like contraption on top of their cameras in order to enlarge the surface area of the flash and making the light softer. However, for that to be practical, you have to be either really close with those contraptions that I've seen to your subject, uh, right in their faces actually, or you have to have a huge softbox on your camera, which is obviously impractical. Um, and with my technique, it's way, way easier. You just take something that you have lying around the house, like, let's say, a white piece of paper, like this book, or you can use a makeup mirror, you can be very fancy and take a piece of cardboard, like maybe a postcard, wrap it into aluminum foil and use that to bounce your flash. Or um, you can basically use anything else because truth be told, I've done this technique with uh, brownish menus and dingy bars and it has worked out fine. So essentially what you do is you open up your flash and you take your picture by using the object that you, uh, that you use to bounce your flash. Um, you put it on the barrel of your lens in front of the pop-up flash and take your picture like this. What will happen is that the flash hits this object, is reflected off of it into the wall and into the ceiling, and reflected off the ceiling and the walls back into the room. All the while it is spreading and effectively becoming a larger light source. So it's the equivalent of having an external flash unit and um, turning it to the sides, to the wall or uh, upwards towards the ceiling, like this, uh, in order to bounce the flash. To know what you can expect when you start out with this technique, I am going to show you some pictures from Christmas 2013, when I just started using this. And I had my friend Nick sit down on a bed in front of a bare wall, and I took a picture with my pop-up flash with this technique. The picture turned out like this, right out of camera. And um, that isn't ideal, obviously, but um, with just a few white balance tweaks and exposure and brightness tweaks, I got a picture like this. And seriously, this is amazing. Nobody would say that this was taken with a pop-up flash, right? It's, it's, actually, <laughs> it's actually quite surprising. There are, of course, a couple of things that you have to look out for. For example, in the beginning you have to practice because if you hold your object, your bounce object, too steep, you will flash yourself right into your eyes and blind yourself. If you hold it at too shallow an angle, uh, half of the pop-up flash will spill over it. So the upper half of your picture will be in direct flash and the lower half of the picture will be in indirect flash. <laughs> Another thing that you have to look out for is that the pop-up flash is really weak. So it will be firing at full power all the time, probably while you're doing this. So recycle times will get way longer than usual. And also it may still be too weak depending on how reflective the surfaces are that it's bouncing off of and how far the light actually has to travel. So you might want to open up your uh, aperture even more, if that's possible, or raise your ISO somewhat. And lastly, what you have to look out for is that if you haven't bounced flash ever before, um, that every surface that the flash bounces off of will um, actually apply a color cast to your flashlight, um, which is normal, and even white walls aren't 100% white, but if you're shooting raw, this shouldn't be a problem and you can cancel this effect out simply by adjusting your white balance. And that's really all there is to it. It's a super simple technique that nobody uses. So if you've tried it, please let me know in the comments below how it has worked out for you. And I want to say a special thanks to Nick for letting me use those very, very old pictures. Um, he has an Italian comedy page, which I've linked down below in the description. So yeah, make sure to like this video, subscribe for more and until then, see ya. I still remember the first time that I held a DSLR in my hand 
It was actually this very DSLR and it was more than a decade ago, so this is a really old DSLR. Um, I was inside and back then it wasn't mine and I didn't know how to use it exactly where all the settings were. And I just wanted to take a picture and then it was like, oh no, no pop of flash. Like, Damn it. Hey, like, and it really annoyed me. And I quickly found out that there is a no flash mode, but even later on, um, I was occasionally in full auto mode. I know that's bad. Some people say that's bad, but I was a beginner and I would try to take a photo and the flash would like, <sighs> it was only later that I found out that this very camera, every time it needs more than a hundred, needs to go over a 100 ISO, it will actually use the flash and switch to 400 ISO. So yeah, I learned that, but yeah, it's like, 